Greetings, Dennis Daniels here. This is Scriblify. Uh, it's a very interesting application. It's not getting a lot of love <clears throat> from the developers, but, uh, and you can see I'm, the rotation of the screen just flipped on me because it doesn't, it doesn't recognize that the, the screen is currently in portrait mode, and there is no portrait mode in this, but be that as it may. It's quite interesting because the, from, a, from a user perspective, you've got a couple of kaleidoscope features which are kind of fun. I want to show you a few of those right now. So this is <clears throat> with the center uh, with four axes. So I'd start drawing, and you can see that I now have four axes. Now I can go with six axes can see how it evolves. I can choose different colors and you can see again how they evolve. Now that's all well and good but something that uh, is kind of fun and is worth investigating is that you can put the center anywhere. So I'm moving the center now and here's the new center. Let's change the color so you can see Here's the new center over here, here's a new center over here, here's a new center over there. And there's a variety of <coughs> brushes that you can use. Some are more interesting than others. Some have swirls. Now, these can be a lot of fun too, because as, as we play with this, you're going to see something that looks very similar to what you might find in nature. And that's part of the reason why I want to show you this is because the algorithm for creating this, this shape effectively is the same because the radial aspect, uh, the, the criteria for the radial aspect doesn't change. The, this particular kaleidoscope is <clears throat> or is following a rule and if you look at these rules you can see flowers and so the the idea here that i want to convey is that the chemical processes that create the shower the flower shapes we see in nature are effectively repeated chemical signals that are being repeated over and over but using a very simple rule set. The basic rule is the same, much like the code that was used to design or that allows me to create these is <clears throat> the same with just one or two variables. The variable being the distance, uh, the variable being the color, the variable being the proximity to the next uh, the next cell in terms of what is nearest. And what we can see here just by using very simple algorithm that what we see in nature in effect could be the same thing on a chemical level. So we're looking at cellular automata. Let me clear this. We're looking at cellular automata using very simple rules, but in creating much different patterns. Very different patterns, but these patterns are the patterns you recognize in nature. As flowers, as coral, as many things. And if we change, for example, we change to a different, change to a different uh, format, or rather a different code base, you start to see what could be the same elements you would see with, uh, for example, uh, microorganisms using the same, using the same base chemical structure but changed 
on the way the chemical structure reproduces itself. So again, a type of cellular automata. Now I'm not quite sure. <clears throat> yeah, you, this looks very familiar, doesn't it? These look like um, many of the microcellular or microorganisms you see in water, or maybe even snowflakes. And the point here that I'm trying to make is that the complicated shapes we see in nature, in effect, are actions of simple algorithms just following same rules over and over and over again, with just a variation in terms of what the uh, the most recent signal might be in terms of information. Appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. And consider cellular automata as a byproduct of a of a bio of a biological algorithm. Biology as an algorithm. Thank you. And happy computing.